What's up you guys? This is Brian Sosak of the Man in Black Leather Studio here in beautiful Norco, California. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to maintain and oil and condition your saddles. Making sure your saddles are nice and hydrated is really important. Leather gets dry and brittle. It's really easy to damage. It becomes weaker and the life of it gets cut down quite a bit. Your safety is on the line. If you don't oil it up, the last thing you want to do is have some straps or something fail on you and then you are put in danger. On top of the safety aspect of making sure your saddles are kept nice and oiled up is it will protect your investment over the long term. Saddles aren't cheap and there's no need to be burning through saddles quickly. The more you keep your saddles nice and oiled and conditioned and healthy, the longer they're going to last in the long term. To keep your saddles nice and oiled and maintained, there's really not much that you need. You can find most of the things you need at your local feed store. Um, if you can't find them, I'm sure you could order them up online real easy. I get my stuff from Tandy Leather, which is the local supply house I get most of my supplies from. Uh, I usually pick the stuff up from there. Um, I'll show you guys right now what some of that stuff looks like. So the first things you're going to need um, is a rag. Usually I like to use a little chunk of fleece or synthetic fleece, but since most of you guys probably won't have that uh, laying around like I do, I will show you guys how I would do it if I was you and I didn't have uh, fleece laying around. The next thing you're going to want is some oil. Um, I would prefer pure Needs Foot oil. They make all kinds of different products. They make uh, Needs Foot compound. Um, you could even use olive oil. I personally haven't used it, but I've heard other people talk uh, highly of it as well. What's going to be the easiest to find is some 100% pure Needs Foot oil. Um, this is Phoebe's brand. This is the brand that I use and I prefer. Um, to be honest with you, a lot of the oils, they're all really similar. And in my opinion, none really uh, outweigh the rest. If you can't find Phoebe's, just make sure you're not buying the cheapest stuff. Um, the cheapest stuff you can find probably will do the job. The more pure the compound and the higher quality the oil is, just the overall better product. You got to remember um, there's no industry in the world where the cheapest is the best so you want to make sure you find a nice pure compound. It doesn't necessarily matter too too much as long as you use plenty of it like I'll show you. Um, you want to apply it generously. I do want to do a little disclaimer. When you're oiling and conditioning your leather, it's going to darken up quite a bit, just like if you have your elbows are a little ashy and you put some lotion on there, they darken up back to the natural color. Um, if you use a Neats Foot compound or something that's not pure, sometimes they mix in some funky stuff and it tends to darken the leather a little bit more um, than if you were to just use the pure Neats Foot compound. And the only other thing that you're gonna need is some leather conditioner. Uh, I prefer this Oakwood brand. Um, there's a lot of other good products out there. I really like the Skidmore's. It's a little bit darker, a little bit more of a runny texture than this. This is a real paste-like, very similar to Chapstick. I, I like the Oakwood brand. It's a really good quality product. Um, it's all natural. It actually smells really good. It's kind of got a eucalyptus-y, aloe vera kind of smell to it. Um, you can get all this stuff on your hands. It's completely safe. I really love the Oakwood product. Um, I've been using it for quite some time now. You're going to want to avoid things like Lexol. You're going to want to avoid things that are really, really liquidy and come out of like a spray bottle. I, the, the main one people use that I do not suggest is Lexol and things like that for when you're doing heavier duty leather like this. Lexol has its place more on your personal goods like your jackets and a little bit lighter duty leather goods. When you're doing saddles and your tack, you're gonna wanna use some heavy duty um, professional grade stuff. Like any, I know I've even seen um, leather conditioning wipes. Um, you're definitely not gonna wanna use that on your saddle. It's really not gonna do much. Um, so stick to coarse tack or heavy duty tack grade oiling products. All right, so the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do when you're taking care of your saddle and you're maintaining it, um, you're gonna to wanna to take off the stirrups just so that way you can get into all these straps real easy. But yeah, you're gonna to wanna to pop the stirrups off, make sure you grab these uh, Blevins buckles. And what I like to do is loop these around. This was a trick I learned 
in my saddle shop days so you don't lose things. Pain in the butt when you drop these and lose one of them and kick it under something or your dog gets it and takes it across the yard and you have no clue where it's at. So I like to do a little bundle like that. So the next thing you're gonna wanna do is just to wipe off all the dust and just kind of get some of this buildup off. Um, you, what will end up happening if you keep too much of the dust on is the oil will liquefy this the dust on your saddle and it will actually um, kind of make like an oil dust mud type deal and then that's what will absorb into the saddle which kind of makes things a little bit darker and it's just not good to have your saddle absorbing that dirt if it's on the surface might as well just knock it off I mean if you actually skip this step and don't dust the saddle off um, I mean you're not really gonna hurt anything technically but it's better to just get that dust off there all right so now that we got our saddle all dusted off and our rags ready you just got to move fast um, and make sure that you're spreading the oil on nice and evenly um, in reality you really can't use too much just by wiping it on you really aren't gonna really apply too much so don't freak out when it gets darker and there's some drip lines and stuff like that um, as long as you get the whole saddle nice and wet and rub down everything will bleed and absorb naturally and you'll be good to go take your little rag try and get a, I try and get a little bit of a puddle going on the first one so this rag starts absorbing once you get your rag nice and wet what you do is you start rubbing it on And you'll notice right away the saddle starts darkening up um, that means it's absorbing that oil uh, you want to make sure if your saddle has saddle strings uh, you're going to want to make sure that these get nice and oiled too because the first thing that usually goes on a saddle is the saddle strings they get brittle the easiest um, they're a thinner leather they move around a lot so there's a lot of bending back and forth you want to make sure you get all the undersides and as much of the surface of the leather as you can. I, my rag started getting dry, so you wanna apply more. Um, and then if you're out there on your own, you're gonna notice that the underside of the leather, the rough outside, absorbs the oil a lot faster because it's more of a raw sponge-like surface. It's really not too difficult. Um, you just wanna make sure you get everything nice and even. Fold these bad boys over. You want to make sure you get underneath all the flaps and try and get every inch of the leather as you can. You want to make sure it's nice and wet. You shouldn't feel it shouldn't feel like you're scrubbing the oil into it. You should have enough on there to where it feels like you're more so applying the oil rather than trying to scrub it into the surface. Right here, it, the most important part of your saddle to oil is down in here in the pocket where your stirrup lives. Um, as you can see, it's real dry. This is where all the pressure from getting on and off your saddle is and where most of your weight is as well. I know you sit on the saddle a lot, but sitting down like this isn't too, too stressful to the saddle but it's when you step all your weight onto these straps is where a lot of uh, battle accidents happen. A lot of people will tell you they, uh, I don't know, I was just getting on my saddle and the thing broke and that's why. So you wanna make these straps of your fenders. The, sh the fenders are the most important thing to keep nice and conditioned because when you use your fenders is when you're getting on the saddle but also when you're turning and you're trying to gain your balance. So when you're trying to push your balance to one side and that's, that fender breaks, that's when a lot of uh, accidents happen and a lot of people get hurt. You're gonna want to avoid the fleece on the underside. If you get it on there, a lot of the, uh, what it's really gonna do is just the oil's gonna collect in those hairs and that, that wool and just kind of collect like a sponge. It's not really going to, to absorb. Now, if you notice, there's a part of the fender you can't really get up, get to right here so what you want to do is pull on your fender and you'll see 
this little section that got missed, you're gonna wanna make sure that that part also gets oiled up. The oiling is a lot more important than the conditioning aspect of it. The oil is going to penetrate deep. It's really what brings the, the strength to the leather. Ta-da, this side is done. Also, I'm gonna go ahead and oil the seat. The thing to keep in mind when you're doing a seat that's rough out, um, it will mat that the rough texture, that suede feeling that the that rough out is, um, it'll mat that down to where it's nice, it's a little bit more smooth. So if you want to preserve your rough out and keep it rough out, you're gonna want to avoid actually getting oil on the seat. That's the one kind of downside to rough out seat is that rough out doesn't last forever. It either gets mat down or it gets oiled down. Um, so if you do want to preserve the life of your, your rough out seat, go for it. And you'll actually notice that even though I've oiled it, it kind of is lightening up right away. That's because rough out acts a little bit different than the regular top side. We got this half of the saddle nice and oiled. And then also take a look underneath the gullet. There you go. That is essentially how you oil a saddle. I gotta do the other half. That's the gist of the oiling process. All right, so when you're moving on to the conditioning part of um, doing your saddle maintenance, you're gonna wanna make sure that your oil is nice and dried up. There's no wet streaks still um, on your leather. If there still is, that means your saddle's not done absorbing the oil. Um, so it's not going to be ready to accept the conditioner. The conditioner is essentially kind of like the same thing as oiling it. It's like a, a little bit of a trade-off. It doesn't penetrate as deep and absorb as good as the oil does, but the conditioner almost makes a, a surface, a little bit more of a surface barrier um, to help keep that oil in, as well as still hydrating the leather. Um, you'll notice that when you're done oiling your saddle um, the surface won't be super glossy but you'll see once I'm finished once you get that conditioner on there the surface will be a lot more glossy um, and a lot more protected and sealed um, so you're gonna want to just start by kind of scooping it out getting a little glob on there you are gonna want to apply this to a nice flat area and then work it in and around from there uh, you should be able to see a nice even glossy coat. If you remember me saying um, when you're oiling it, it shouldn't feel like you're scrubbing the oil or forcing the oil into the leather um, out of the rag. Um, it's a little bit different for the conditioner. The conditioner is something you actually want to kind of work work into the surface of the leather, whereas the, you're more so applying the oil. Conditioning aspect of this is a little bit faster of a process because when you're oiling it, you need to make sure that the saddle is absorbing all that liquid. Whereas the conditioner, the saddle's already nice and semi-supple, uh, so it doesn't take so long to fully absorb. But yeah, same process as the oil. Make sure you're nice and thorough and get everything nice and conditioned. All right, so last thing I'm gonna do is condition the seat. Now, here's a disclaimer, like I was saying during the oiling process, if you have a nice rough out seat that you do not want slick down at all, you need to avoid the seat at all costs. When you put oil or conditioner on it, it's going to slick down that surface and you're gonna lose that, that nice grippy feel. So if you like, if you don't want it so grippy, then go ahead and throw some oil and conditioner on there. But if you wanna preserve that grip, of your seat and maybe you got a jockey skirts that are rough out you want to avoid um, conditioning those but when you condition rough out you'll kind of see in this video as you can see it's got this this uh, lighter color that's the uh, the rough outs basically I like to think of it as the grip of the rough out it's those little fibers that are sticking up off the surface um, when you condition it and mat it down it really goes away Actually, I'm going to rub some in with my hand to work all this even so it's nice and even. But as you can see, that seat is nice and slick and smooth now and conditioned up nicely. So I'm going to wipe off my little particles here and there and 
give you guys a little walk around and look at how it looks now. And there we go. Saddle is nice and taken care of. You can see it's got a nice glossy finish to it now. It's not chalky. The leather looks nice and healthy compared to what it used to. It's got a nice deep tone to it. Just like when you put a nice coat of lotion on your own skin, your skin just looks way healthier. Same exact concept for saddles. But yeah, this saddle turned out epic. A little bit darker than when we started to, but that's a given for any saddle you're gonna be oiling and conditioning. But there it is. You guys officially know how to oil and condition a saddle. So there you guys have it. Hope you guys learned something and you guys can go out and do it on your own. Um, I do wanna close the video out by saying that this saddle was in pretty decent shape for a lot of the saddles that I see come through to the shop. A lot of saddles are a little worse off than this one. So your saddle might need a little more oil, um, a little more conditioning. Really, you can't hurt it by putting too much oil or conditioning on there. It might darken up a little bit more than this one did. All that stuff is okay. That just means you're bringing extra life back to it. If your saddle is in really bad shape, I do highly, highly, highly recommend you taking it to your local uh, saddle shop your local expert to have them take a look at it um, a lot of time uh, saddle shops will do a little bit more thorough of a job um, than I showed you guys I showed you guys the basic way for an everyday person to just kind of keep up and maintain their saddle um, but a lot of professionals will actually take off rosettes um, peel back layers of the saddle to really get up in there to places um, that you can't just really reach with your hands. If you do think your saddle is in a little bit worse shape, I do highly recommend taking it into a professional. What I showed you today is definitely more than enough to do average maintenance. Another thing I recommend is taking it into your local professional, having them do a professional servicing of your saddle, and then for the next year, maybe year and a half, um, you can do these little tune-ups every, uh, every couple months, every three months, every four months, um, maybe even every six months, depending on how much you get out there and ride. You have tack that you want to uh, maintain and kind of breathe extra life into them. The same exact process that you saw me do on this saddle is the same exact things you would do to your tack as well. You're gonna wanna wipe them down, oil them up first, and then go ahead and condition them. But yeah, I really hope you guys learned something from this video. Um, it was pretty fun. I haven't done too much saddle stuff in a while. I, uh, I learned a lot of my basics in the saddle shop and then I went out to do my own thing and start creating things more than doing saddle maintenance. Um, but it was real fun to actually do this, to be honest. I haven't done this in quite a while. So yeah, I had a blast. I hope you guys had a blast. If you liked the video, make sure you give it a like. If you want to see more leather videos, make sure you subscribe or check out all my other videos I have up so far. Um, but I really appreciate you guys watching. Uh, it means a whole lot to me. You can connect with me on my social media accounts. I'm on Facebook and Instagram and my website as well. You can check all that stuff down in the description below. Um, I'd really appreciate it if you guys gave me a follow or check me out on social media. Uh, that's where I post my day-to-day -day life, a lot of the stuff I work on, the stuff I make. Um, posting on that stuff almost every single day. So, um, yeah, I really appreciate it, you guys. I hope you guys learned. I hope you guys uh, learned something. I hope I was a help. Um, if you have any questions or even any other um, recommendations or suggestions of how you guys maintain your saddles and your tack, leave that in the comments down below as well. Um, but other than that, hope you guys have a great day and hope you guys get after it and you go out and be somebody. <laughs>